All right, so let's just check out the Safari settings. We're gonna go to Safari, Preferences, and here's our general pane. Let's go through it. Safari opens with, when Safari opens, all non-private windows from last session are gonna open again. I have my new windows open with my homepage and new tabs open with my homepage, and I make Google my homepage. I remove history items manually. My favorites shows favorites. Files are downloaded to the downloads folder, but I can understand if you would wanna make it your desktop or a different folder. Remove download list items manually. Open safe files after downloading means that, let's say you download a zipped PDF. Uh, after you finish downloading it, it'll automatically unzip it. I don't want it to do that, so I have that unchecked. Now let's go to tabs. Tab layout has two different styles. Let's check them out. So we have compact, which looks like this. And we have separate, which looks like this. I personally think compact is a little bit cleaner looking. Open pages and tabs instead of windows automatically, which means if I click a link, it's going to open it in a new tab in Safari instead of a new window. Then we have navigation. I have it checked so that command click opens a link in a new tab. Lastly, use command 1 through command 9 to switch tabs. If I have three tabs open, Rotten Tomatoes, YouTube, and Mac Rumors, I can toggle between these by doing Command 1, Command 2, Command 3. Next is Autofill. I love Autofill. I have it checked for all forms of information. Contacts, usernames and passwords, credit cards, and other forms. Next is Passwords. For passwords, you can unlock it and you can see all your login information for all your different websites. For search, you can choose your search engine. I use Google, but you can have Yahoo, Bing, DuckDuckGo, and Ecosia. You can choose to include search engine suggestions. For smart search field, that's this URL bar. I have include Safari suggestions, quick website search, preload top hit in the background, and show favorites all checked. In security, I have warn when visiting a fraudulent website checked and enable JavaScript check. For privacy, under website tracking, I have it checked for prevent cross-site tracking. I hide IP address from trackers. I don't block all cookies, but this is where you would manage that. I allow Apple Pay and Apple Card. And web advertising, I allow privacy preserving measurement of ad effectiveness. I truly have no idea what that does. Next. Under websites, it's getting a bit more technical. You have your reader settings where you can automatically use reader on certain websites. So if I go to CNN, I can choose it here to put that on. And it's automatically, when I go to CNN, put it into reader mode for a much better reading experience. We have settings for content blockers on certain websites, autoplay capabilities on specific websites. If you know that for a specific website you want the page zoomed in at a certain level, you can choose that here. You can do camera settings, microphone screen sharing locations, download settings, which is choosing what websites are allowed to download files to your computer, notification settings, where you can deny certain websites uh, putting notifications on your computer, and pop-up window settings. Next up is a great one, extensions. So I have a handful of extensions that I use, and let's go through them. First is dark mode for Safari, and what it allows you to do is to apply a dark background to bright websites like Rotten Tomatoes. For ad blocking, I use Wiper. Under advanced, we have show full website address, which shows the full www.google.com link. For accessibility, you can have Never use font sizes smaller than, and then you choose the size. For me, I have 15, which means that text is never going to be smaller than 15 points. You can have press tab to highlight each item on a web page, and that looks like this. I'm going to hit tab. We can show color in compact tab bar, blends the top bar to match the color of the website. For reading list, we can save articles for offline reading automatically. For style sheet, I would leave it alone. For default encoding, I would leave it alone. Proxies, I would leave that alone. You can also hit show develop menu and menu bar, but I doubt you'll need that. Here's some quick pro tips. When you're playing any video, you can right click the sound icon here and enter picture in picture. Press command shift N to create a new private window.
go to view customize toolbar and make your top toolbar as simple and minimalistic as possible i have the url bar here i have my downloads here i have dark mode for safari extension here and text size adjustment here that's it to translate a website go to view translation translate to english